Hey all, this is Betsy. Um, I am having trouble with my camera, but um, if you it, I might be able to get it to work if I restart my computer. Um, okay, so Betsy says she's having some computer trouble and she just wants us to start the meeting. Um, let me pull up the, um, the um, agenda. Um, and so um, I will call this meeting to order. Um, I don't have code 2.2-3708.2 parentheses A3, um, but Presumably that's the code that says that we're allowed to meet um, virtually rather than in person because the coronavirus pandemic makes it um, unsafe and impractical to gather together in person. Is there anything I'm forgetting about that? Does, is there anything that me needs to be said other than that? Sounds good. Okay. Um, so then, uh, Kathleen, are you speaking?
Okay, so this is a special. Um, oh, go for it. Um, no, I was not speaking. Um, I think John was so. Yeah, I'm. I'm driving. I'm sorry, guys. I'm like going to address a family emergency, so I'm driving. So I probably have really bad leg time. I don't know. I'm driving in the country. Um, okay, so I'll try to push through. This is a special meeting of the CRHA Board of Commissioners on Tuesday, March 30th um, at 5 p.m. Um, and can someone do a roll call of the commissioners? I'm gonna to attempt to do that. So please forgive me if it gets loud in my household. Um, Commissioner Goldblatt. Here. Commissioner Green. Here. Dr. Henry. Here. Chair Rucker. Commissioner Slaughter. Mayor Walker. Did I forget anybody? That's everyone. Do we have a quorum? If we count Betsy. First. But she's not technically on here yet. No quorum. No quorum. That's what I thought. Is Mayor Walker coming? Um, she said she was. The last time I spoke with her. Is Chair Record trying to rejoin? Yeah, that's my understanding. She wanted, she was trying to reboot her computer. Her computer. I mean, should we wait a few minutes until she's she or um, Mayor Walker joins? Well, we can't take a vote without a quorum, right? I can redo roll if one of the two join on soon. Yeah, I just don't. Can we continue with the agenda? Or do we have to, like, I don't know what it means if we don't have a quorum. Text I don't think we you can could. continue with that. No, I don't think we can. Yeah, I agree. Oh, but Betsy just joined. Oh, good. Do you want me to redo the whole roll call or just call in uh, Chair Rutger? Just call in Rutger so we can move on. <laughs> Chair Rutger. Our... You're muted. Okay, hi, I'm here, yes. Okay, you guys do now have a quorum. Yay. <laughs> Um, I'm on my phone, so in my laptop, for some reason, is still restarting itself. It, I, I don't know. It must be very unhappy. Um, so if one of you wants to keep going on the meeting, I don't, I can't see the agenda or anything. So okay, I'll, I'll, I can copy and paste it into the chat in a moment um, so that you can see it. But we're at the, we'll take a moment of silence. Wonderful. Um, okay, Betsy, do you want me to read out the meeting dates? I don't know if you have those. Yeah, you can go ahead. Um, all right, so next we have um, general announcements. So the um, next CRHA board work session is Thursday, April 8th, um, 2021 at 5 p.m. via Zoom. Our regular board meeting is Monday, April 26th at 6 p.m. 
The safety meeting meets every other Tuesday. It meets tonight at 6 p.m. Um, and then again on, uh, at, on April 13th at 6 p.m. Um, and you need to enter passcode 181698. It's on the CRHA website and on the Facebook page to get into the me uh, meeting and you can find all the Zoom info there. The redevelopment committee meeting is every first Thursday of the month at 4 p.m. This is a new time um, and you can go to the website for the Zoom info to get in. Um, the resident services committee meets every second Tuesday of the month at 1 p.m. Um, and you can also find the Zoom meeting um, information there. Are there any other announcements or meeting dates that I missed? Okay, if not, we are at public comments. If you would like to uh, speak to the CRHA at this time, please uh, click the raise hand icon in the Zoom webinar. If you're joining us via telephone, press star nine. Each speaker will be allowed up to three minutes. Please share your place of residence when you begin. Okay, uh, Brandon Collins, you are on with the board. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Good evening, CRHA Board of Commissioners. I'm Brandon Collins. I'm a staff person for FAR, the Public Housing Association of Residents. We are the resident council and the resident advisory board um, for dealings with CRHA. Um, we've had some back and forth on your budget. Um, I think we all appreciate the approach you took. Um, we know that the, the big question before you is uh, what to do about the security contract um, and the massive amount of money you're spending for security that um, from y'all's perspective and from many residents' perspective um, is not really accomplishing much, especially for the amount of money being um, spent. Um, so uh, we've done some digging around. Um, a big concern of ours is what does that mean for Crescent Halls, which has very different security needs. Um, it was proposed that they that CRHA could hire its own uh, door person um, for the building. Um, we've had some conversations. Um, residents there overwhelmingly feel like the security uh, is not doing what they expect of it. Um, that may be some misunderstanding of what the security is supposed to be doing there, um, but I think a door greeter situation there, if CRHA were to work very closely with the residents there on what their needs are, that um, certainly a better way of handling that could be in place. Um, one resident I spoke to mentioned um, somebody having a window broken twice um, in a very short uh, amount of time and how how could that happen if there was security there which you know they were on duty uh, and how were car windows broken when that happened um, the other sites um, I think you get a similar perspective um, a lot of that's been funneled through the safety committee um, I think it's very important that we ramp up participation on that committee I know it's not easy um, but if that committee is to guide the 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 deployment of funds um, for safety and security. Um, you know, we, we're going to have to again work with these very closely to identify what's needed. Um, there is definitely that same sense that security is not really keeping crime from happening, um, and that other other things may be more beneficial to the community. So I can't say for sure that that's a far position, but that is our general experience with residents um, over these past few weeks. And I think we'll leave it at that. Our next speaker is uh, Tim Sansoni. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. That's okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is Tim Sansone. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, yes. Thank you for uh, having me again. Um, Tim Sansone with the uh, president of Century Force Security. 
Um, just wanted to, again, reiterate our stance and uh, on our proposal, um, but to really quick address some of the comments and the statement provided by FAR just a moment ago. Um, despite that statement, um, security has been doing a tremendous job at these properties. Um, since we last met last Monday, uh, there's now over 167 incidents that have occurred since January, um, uh, since we started. That's an increase of 20 since last Monday's meeting. Um, the officers are diligently patrolling the areas they need to patrol and are documenting all of these incidents and responding to them appropriately. One such incident I want to uh, bring to your all's attention, especially, is at Crescent Hall. Um, the officers are doing a tremendous job there, um, despite any observations or comments made by far. Um, one such incident, there was an el elderly resident that had fallen and one of our officers last week had assisted her and actually saved her um, because he went upstairs and assisted her when she fell, called 911 and directed paramedics to assist her. And there was an incident report documenting that there. That was one of the 20 incidents that have happened since last week. Um, so the officers are doing a, a, a very good job at these properties. Um, and specifically regarding that incident, um, that Brandon had mentioned about a broken window. Uh, that was documented and reported. That was one of the other 20 incidents that have occurred since last week. Um, since speaking with John Sales um, last week, the officers have been told now, instead of patrolling Crescent Halls to just remain permanently assigned to the front door in the lobby, so they're not patrolling anymore. Um, but that incident was brought to our attention. Um, it happened outside, so since they don't patrol anymore, um, that the officer went outside when it was brought to his attention to submit a report. He got a police case number from CPD, uh, but the officers have now been told to control access completely for Crescent Hall. Uh, but overall, they are doing an excellent job. Um, there have been a total of 167 incidents to date. Um, that's an increase of 20 since last week. Um, so there's clearly a lot of activity going on in these properties. Um, the officers are doing everything that they can to curb and address them. Um, I wanted to also mention, aside from the proposal that had been submitted last week to the board's attention for consideration, um, should the board decide to prefer a different alternative as far as in, uh, continuing with security, there, all, there are other alternatives we can propose besides this proposal. Um, this isn't the only one. This is the one we would recommend. Um, but there are, are other options should the board want to get an additional option as far as security proposals go. All right, would anyone else like to speak at this time? Madam Chair, we have no more hands raised. Okay. Um, it does, okay, so no other public comment? I'm looking, sorry, I'm on my laptop now so I can. I can better see what's going on. Yes, no more hands raised at this time. Okay. Um, let me find our agenda. So, commissioners, it sounds like we need to discuss um, discuss this and uh, move eventually to a resolution and vote on the, um, I'm trying to pull it up. Okay, on the, on the budget for the next year. So opening discussion. Would it be appropriate to read the resolution before we have the discussion? Yeah. To read the resolution and then have discussion and then call for a vote? Yep. I have it up if I can go ahead and read it. Um, this would be resolution number 1424, resolution approving the authority-wide budget for fiscal year ending March 31st, 2022. Um, whereas the authority-wide budget for the Charlottesville Redevelopment and Housing Authority for the fiscal year ending March 31, 2022, which has been reviewed by the commissioners, and whereas the public housing budget for the fiscal year ending March 31, 2022, which is included as part of the authority-wide budget has also been reviewed. And whereas with respect to the public housing budget, the incomes and rents of the residents residing in the authority's public housing at the time of the last annual re-examination have also been reviewed. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved by the commissioners of the Charlottesville Redevelopment and Housing Authority pursuant to the attached certificates that, uh, number one, the authority-wide budget for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2022 is hereby approved. Number two, the housing, uh, public housing budget for the fiscal year ending March 31st, 2002 is hereby approved. Number three, the following certification, certifications are hereby made by the executive director with respect to the public housing budget. That number one, uh, well, this is A number one, um, all regulatory and statutory requirements have been met. Number two, there are sufficient operating reserves to meet the working capital needs of its developments. Three, the proposed expenditures are necessary in the efficient and economical operation of the housing for the purpose of serving low income residents. Number four, the financial plan is reasonable in that A, it indicates a source of funding adequate to cover all proposed expenditures and B, the calculation of eligibility for federal funding is in accordance with the provisions of the regulations. Under 24 CFR 968.110E and F, comply with the wage rate requirements. Under 24 CFR 96811I, will comply with the requirements for access to records and audits. And D, under 24 CFR 960.257, and 24 CFR 990.113 will comply with the requirements for the re-examination of family income and composition, and then resolved on this day by the commissioners. Um, and I can probably put it up on the screen if anyone cares to see. Um, all of that. So it seems like, um, Kathleen, are you connected on here? Yes, sorry. Sorry. I'm also here. Oh, hey, John, um, Mr. Sales. Um, just wondering if there's any other changes we should know about, but it, well, it seems like the um, security um, the shift in how we provide security um, may change, but anything else we need to look out for or know about um, between you know now and when we last um, spoke with you all? Um, no, I've not changed anything since the last we last time we spoke. Um, I still have budgeted in uh, to fulfill the door greeters um, at one and a half positions. Um, to deal with uh, Crescent Halls and the entry and exit of that building. Um, we do anticipate, based upon where we are right now financially, as long as we uh, stay projected with our current budget, we'll meet our reserve goal from HUD at the end of um, 2022's fiscal year. Um, HUD has us meeting it in two years, so we'll beat that by a year, which is really nice. Um, so that will get us out of trouble status for our financial situation. Um, I believe that is the only other update we have. Uh, we did submit the information for the PPP loan that you all passed at the last meeting. Um, so we do uh, believe we'll have that funding as well, uh, but that is a loan until it's forgiven. So we have to carry it as a, uh, as a, as a loan on our books as well. So I don't have that proposed in this budget, but we'll come back and uh, we can deal with that at that time, the loan is forgiven. That is all I have, unless there's any questions from the commissioners. Um, so I have one question. One of the things that we had discussed in our last meeting was um, having, you know, the question of how we are going to compensate or do um, the night work that if we have someone at the door, 
um, 24 hours a day, including weekends at Crescent Halls, that um, we're going to have people, you know, working through the night. Um, and Mayor Welkler had asked, you know, had raised the issue of thinking about how many people we would need. I don't know if the current budget has any flexibility in it to have additional um, people or there, if there was any thought around um, the grueling work that having a, um, a nocturnal schedule has. Um, yes, we did. So we, I, that's why I added the uh, half a person. Uh, but we also don't plan to do 24 hours. Um, so the plan is to work the schedule that is currently being worked uh, with security. So it's after CRHA staff typically leaves the building, which is at five o'clock. Um, so that's when we were started. It wouldn't be 24 um, seven. Once we have redeveloped the site, there may be a possibility where we actually have a staff member there uh, in that office or in that space uh, because they are building that bump out. We can actually maybe be able to house someone there, uh, another staff worker, uh, maybe the work order person is there. So they're doing double duty. They're playing uh, the check-in IDs while also uh, answering the phone and taking work orders. Um, that is a possibility. So it's not hiring an additional staff member, but it's still keeping that access control um, so we have talked about that, what that looks like internally, um, but that we have to get to a certain point where we have redeveloped that space to fit that person there. Because right now that person couldn't fit there. Thank you. One, one other question about um, the Crescent Hall's position, and this, this doesn't necessarily have to do with the budget, so maybe we can talk about it later, but... Um, during construction, I know at times the entrance will move and change and, you know, we just may need, I know the um, construction company provides some help with this, but just, just thinking we're going to need some help, more additional help potentially during the day, even um, with people entering at, you know, temporary entrances um, when they have to move the entrance. Um, I don't think that affects the budget necessarily. Just, just I'm just thinking about that. Yeah, I think that's something that GMA has built into their budget: site control and site safety. Uh, mm -hmm. Knowing that this is still going to be an active building, uh, with COVID still being heavily present in the area, um, so they they have put that in their budget to take care of that. Um, so we have something in place for that. What? But I think uh, even have... with the, sorry. No, go ahead. Even with the transition, the temporary uh, relocation of the door, that's actually a better spot when it comes to uh, having a staff member there because there is an office space right off of that door. Um, so that, that could easily be a place where we could uh, set the work order person uh, to gain, to do access control and still uh, do their main job of entering work orders. Does, this, does the co uh, contractor have built in for overnight security for any building materials or anything like that so that there's no theft or vandalism? Um, I do not. I can't tell you that answer right now, but I can check and get back with you. Well, there's not going to be any way possible to store all the building materials and everything needed on the inside. And so that is a, a, a huge part of you know, problems with with construction sites and yeah since we know there's nobody from the, the, the desk person won't be patrolling outside I, I would like to know that because I think that could it, it could cause some problems we don't want any delays because building materials or equipment were was damaged or building materials stolen or anything like that I agree, I agree that that is an issue, but that is some, I also think that's something that the con, we have to put on the contractor to address, to ensure, uh, because it is their material. And so the building is turned over. So it's their liability. So they are, they are supposed to address that, but I can get with uh, GMA and I can come back with an answer on that for you. I can have that for you tomorrow. I don't need it tomorrow, but I just think it's something we need to, to make, make sure that, that that's in that contract. Good point. 
Um, other thoughts or anyone else have thoughts before we go into a, a vote for the budget? I'm just wondering if we can say a little bit, you know, coming out of the safety committee meetings and getting ready to go to one um, pretty soon. I'm just wondering what this is going to look like. Um, and I think that's something that the people who attend the safety committee tonight are going to want to know. And so um, if we don't have a security contract, what's um, what's the relationship with the Buck Squad or with other organizations? I can say with some clarity, this is what it'll look like at Crescent Halls. Um, but of course, that's not the only place that people have um, safety concerns. And so I would I would just like to know what thing, yeah, what arrangement we imagine. Um, so I think the, the Buck Squad is actively working in the communities already, um, even without having a contract or anything in place. I do have a meeting scheduled with uh, Mr. Gilmore tomorrow uh, to discuss further uh, what the arrangement will be um, with them either occupying space and working uh, throughout our spaces, our communities um, to address the safety issue. Um, so I believe it, it's a multitude of things. It's a, addressing some of the, the violence itself, but also addressing some of the things that lead to the violence. Um, and working with uh, like the clinic at West Haven, uh, April Oliver, and, and the services she's providing. Um, it's all of those things is what it looks like when you are addressing safety. Um, but beyond that, I, I think the, the safety committee is really gonna be deciding on uh, what services and what safety looks like and where they would like to spend the money that we've put in place to address safety. Um, so it's if, if it's a buck squad or if it's peace in the streets or some other organization funding those initiatives and providing them with the services that they need in order to accomplish their goals and uh, overall our goals, which is to provide safe housing to all the families that live in our communities. Okay, thank you. And this, this may not be a part for the budget. I, I, I'm just gonna, I guess maybe some of you don't know, I just kind of speak my, my mind and my opinion. I am concerned, I don't have an answer. So I, I hate doing that, but I'm concerned about both the Buck Squad and, and Peace in the Streets. And this is why I feel like some of this was formed on emotion from the death of someone and I'm concerned that the momentum can keep going when that emotion starts to disseminate. So that is just a concern. I'm putting it out there. I want to make sure that there's there's safety, um, and 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 I want to make sure that the residents feel feel safe. And and I, I I do think what is being done is extremely admirable. And and a, a, you know we talk about get outside of the box a lot and I think this is wonderful I just I'm just hopeful that after that morning and and the healing starts to happen that this can continue and that's just my only concern I would agree with you but I would also point to the fact that a lot of the folks involved in the book squad have also been involved in generational issues involving crime within the this very community and so I think that's why they feel somewhat closer to what's going on. And so I think that's also an important context to take right along with your concern because it's such an ongoing issue. You know, it's, there's no start, there's no finish, it seems like it's just an ongoing continuum. But so I'd just like to point that out as well. I absolutely agree with you, Dr. Henry. I, from what I, from the presentation, I understand it's uh, folks very um, uh, familiar and, and living in the community and, and very part of the community. Um, I just hope we, I hope it's sustainable. That's my only just to make sure so that we I would love to get to an ending point. It would love to see where we're it's not one of those perpetuating cycles. Yeah, I, I would agree with um, the concern about, uh, you know, 
I guess, taking away an official, you know, security company that uh, we're paying, but I'm, I'm totally willing to try it out. And I, if this works, I do think it's better, you know, a better system in the end. And um, I mean, just in terms of the vote, I, I, I'm going to vote for the, the current budget and hope that, you know, if things change, we have next year, we have the reserve money that we are supposed to have sitting there if we need it. You know, I'm, I, I do think we can um, give it a try and really try to support it so that, is, that it is sustainable. Um, we'll also, I know Mayor Walker mentioned um, circling back, we haven't been as consistent with meeting or at least checking in with the um, police either. And so maybe that's another parallel, you know, whether or not we want them there more often or not. And, you know, we still should be just, you know, keeping in contact with them. Um, so we've got both of those, um, uh, you know, both of those, um, I wouldn't say institutions, I don't know. Or You're still receiving a salary. So they still should be policing. Exactly, yeah. And we haven't really, I think we we were reactive and not wanting a heavy hand coming in there, but we need to keep that on a, we need to keep the communication on a consistent mm -hmm. basis so that, you know, we're getting what we need. Um, and just, I think it's, it's just great if we can talk with them more often. Um, All right, any other thoughts or should we should we move to a vote? I move that we move to accept the resolution. Second. Okay. Um, how, how did you all do the roll call before? Ms. Height calls it. I don't know if she's doing oh. that if someone else. I can do it. Chair awesome. Rucker. Uh, yes. Dr. Henry. Yes. Chair Green. I'm sorry, Commissioner Green. I'm moving you on up. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, yes. Commissioner Goldblatt. Yes. Commissioner Slaughter. Mayor Walker. Okay, resolution has passed. Um, and we have time for additional public comments. Um, Before we do that, um, I'll, I'm gonna yeah. hop off even if it's still going at six, but those of you, um, the safety committee meeting will be happening at 6 p.m. tonight if anyone's listening. Um, it looks like Brandon has his hand up. I don't know how to uh, unmute, ask to unmute. All right. Thank okay. you, Jay. I don't want to take up too much of your time in this very quick meeting. Um, I uh, would like to say two things. Um, Laura, if you could um, please restate uh, the meeting information for anybody who's watching that might want to attend the safety meeting. That'd be super. Um, and the other was um, there is um, there was some discussion amongst FAR about Section 3 and the budget. Um, I know you just passed a budget. Um, and I know there is um, at least some piece of funding in the budget for Section 3. And wondering if um, in, you know, five minutes or less if uh, we could maybe get a, a rundown on what, what section three might mean under this budget that was just passed. That's about it. I think I, I can take that. Um, as long as the board allows me to answer that. Please. Okay. Um, so we did have some employees that uh, were hired last year um, through section through the section three program. 
Um, so we have continued that funding for those positions. We've also added some seasonal positions for uh, the maintenance department that will also be section three. Um, and we have also, uh, we haven't fully completed our redevelopment budget yet. So that one, we will need to tackle that. So we have the annual agency budget now. Uh, we'll be working on the redevelopment budget, which is the funding that the city provided, I believe two or three years ago. Um, it was a large lump sum. Um, so that has not, from what I can find, it has never been budgeted. Uh, the city highlighted some areas where the funding could be spent, but the housing authority never created an official budget around it um, to say where the money was going to be spent. Uh, so we have also committed uh, to shoring up our section three program through that that uh, source of funding. So we'll work with uh, FAR to actually complete that. I know Joy has uh, been preaching about having a budget and and working through that budget and and making sure that everyone that is involved in the redevelopment process knows what's in that budget. So we will be doing that this month in April um, and that will come to the board in May. So besides the positions that we have already hired um, and the positions that we will hire, that's what we have in section three. Uh, but of course, all of our positions um, as a agency are open to section three. So two things, um, I, I, for, um, for anyone who's watching, I just pasted into the chat, the safety committee information, just because there's a Zoom link in there that's, um, you know, that like if I read out the URL, probably would not be the most effective way to get it. Um, but we'll be meeting tonight at 6 p.m., so in about 15 minutes. Um, if you can't make it tonight, we'll meet again on April 13th, 2021 at 6 p.m. The Zoom link is always the same. The passcode is always the same. So I've pasted the Zoom link in along with the passcode. The passcode is 181698. Um, if you are trying to call um, on your phone, you can call at 1646. 518-9805. That number again is 1646-518-9805. And again, the passcode, if you're calling in, is 181698. Um, the other thing is I'm excited to hear about more hiring through Section 3. I realize this isn't a silver bullet, but if we're thinking about holistic solutions to safety, it seems to me that job creation is a pretty important piece of that. I would just echo that. I think that is one of the main components. It's hard to get individuals into a, a job, a, a, I guess, a, a legal job um, when they are making so much money uh, the illegal way. Um, so it's providing services to enhance enhance their, um, their skill set so they can be more valuable um, in the legal path of uh, gainful employment. Um, and Ms. Glenn Matthews helpfully just wrote in anyone who's perhaps watching and listening and you can't see the chat. If you wanted to join, all of the Zoom information for the safety committee meeting is also on the CRHA Facebook page. Great, thank you. And maybe I know um, Ms. Joy Johnson has been um, had a rough couple months, but you know maybe we'll hear from her at the board meeting about future Section Three. Um, initiatives, because I know she was working hard with the city and getting people trained for um, redevelopment related work. So um, maybe we can get an update on how that might get started or is, is starting back up, um, like at a board meeting or a redevelopment meeting. Okay. And one oh. other thing, the section mm -hmm. three plan for the agency will be coming to the board. Um, possibly in April or at, or early May. So we are working through the section three plan now. Great. Okay, um, any last comments? Okay. I move that we adjourn. Second. Chair Rutger? Yes. Dr. Henry? Yes. 
Commissioner Green. Yes. Commissioner Goldblatt. Yes. Commissioner um, Slaughter. Mayor Walker. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.